So, Konami, nearly two years after the initial teaser trailer back in 2022, finally gave us a release date for the upcoming Silent Hill 2 remake, along with some new scenes, character designs, and gameplay in the Sony State of Play, which took place on the 30th of May. <laughs> And I gotta say, after everything that was shown in the trailers and gameplay, I still have mixed feelings about this whole ordeal. With such a classic title like Silent Hill 2, you have to be really careful in terms of making choices how to handle it, and what you decide to change about it. Especially since the entire Silent Hill franchise is already on the ropes enough as it is, and has been for the last couple of years, if not decade. Ever since the remake was revealed back in 2022, there's always been a bit of a controversial aura floating around it. And as more and more things have been revealed, now with an actual release date not too far from now, it doesn't seem like that aura has improved for the better. Now, of course, as I said before, when remaking or changing anything that has to do with arguably one of the most beloved, influential, and legendary horror games of all time, fans of the genre would usually want it to, you know, turn out good, and somewhat faithful to the original material. Plus, honestly, I wouldn't even know what events they could change to improve on it other than graphically. I played through the classic a little while ago, so I still have a fresh mind about it, and I can't really seem to recount a singular instance where I thought, ah, uh, this is a bit too silly, or this sucks. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? We're letting that one slide because it's so good. Also, am I the only one that thought they should have kept the fixed camera angles, or at least have the option to turn on fixed camera angles? I feel like that's what created a lot of the tension and mystique in the original, since you'd always be placed in front of James, so you couldn't see anything in front of you for half the time, and you had to use your sense of hearing if an enemy was close by. It'll definitely take some time to get used to the new third-person perspective, being stuck behind James's back constantly, instead of developer-picked angles that would intensify the experience. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? And let's be honest with ourselves, the only reason why Konami is doing this is because of the overwhelming success of the Resident Evil remakes. Or it seems very likely that that would be the reason why at least. Which in itself is not bad. I mean, it would be amazing if they could create a product that was on par with those. One of the first mistakes that I think they did was deciding to hire a separate company to develop the game for them. Bloober Team. A western studio, by the way. And we've already seen how the western Silent Hill games have been received throughout the years after the splitting of the original Team Silent. So already there, it's tough to regain that original connection to the classic. But why did Team Silent disband in the first place after such an incredible four-way streak? We got Silent Hill 1. Two, three, four, BAM! Oh. I see. From the cutscenes we got so far, to me it honestly feels like they've grounded the characters and the whole style a bit more. It feels more normal, I guess you could say. The interactions and conversations seems like those you would hear in any other media, as opposed to the original Silent Hill 2, which always seemed to have this kind of floaty, almost dreamlike essence to it, regarding the cutscenes at least. It's hard to explain, it's just, there's something about the way the lines are delivered along with the early mocap and facial animations that just gives it that uncanny vibe. That would be the best way I could explain it. With their long pauses and weird enunciation on certain words, made it really uncanny and gave the player a sense that something was off, almost right from the get-go. Now, that might just be the PS2 limitations, but that's also kind of what made it work for the setting, and how Silent Hill is generally supposed to be depicted. Uncanny would be the best word to explain it, that's basically what I'm trying to say. And I'm not really getting that vibe from the remake from what we've seen so far. We got happy-go-lucky HD James Sunderland over here with... Angela... Or... Petruccio Auditore, as I like to call them, with a potato in their mouth. I'm sorry, I... I was just... It's okay, I didn't mean to scare you. But then, almost immediately after, we get another cutscene where they don't look half bad, actually. And that's my main point. Everything. Character models, voice lines, animations, sounds... They all seem like different iterations in every scene we get. 
I swear, I've seen like five different versions of James Sunderland since the teaser trailer came out. Now, it would make sense why it would differ from version to version. They've obviously had months to fine tune certain elements from each trailer we've got, but in the same trailer? I don't understand, maybe it's the lighting or something, but it goes from like crystal clear and clean 3D modeling on certain characters like Laura and James in some scenes, but then Angela looks straight out of Assassin's Creed. I've heard Crimson Chin floating around, I've heard MJ from Spider-Man 2, it's that kind of stuff. So it all seems very inconsistent with everyone looking different in every cutscene. I honestly don't know what's going on, it all seems a bit all over the place right now. We also received a little cast interview with the two new actors playing James and Mary slash Maria, and honestly they don't seem half bad either. They both seem like they're passionate about their roles and that they do their best to respect the characters which they're playing, trying their best to replicate the original counterparts, which is good. The thing that I paid most attention to was the original game. So he is not um, an action hero by any means. Um, he is just a guy who is a little lost at the top of this game and uh, in, in a sense of um, he, he is to, to a greater extent in a, in a bewildered state. Um, so it's very interesting um, charting his his journey. Now, they ain't no Monica Horgan or Guy Sihi. How can you sit there eating pizza? This town is full of monsters. Let's go after her. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought the voice acting was pretty good, at least for the most part. We also got some more insight on the new movie coming out, Return to Silent Hill, which, again, is a film adaptation of Silent Hill 2. They're really going all out on Silent Hill 2, huh? made by the same guy who made the first two, so that's something to think about. From what we saw, I mean, it looked alright? I don't know about the James actor though. Seems like he's getting the Leon Kennedy treatment from Welcome to Raccoon City. What are you doing here, Leon? But you said everyone into the briefing room, so here I am. I didn't mean you! You moron! Not you, Leon! Everyone else! Get right. back there, man! And get a haircut, you got- I feel like the characters you're trying to portray in a movie or series should look, you know, just a little bit like the video game counterpart, other than just the clothing, but you know, that could just be me. And lastly, it wouldn't be Konami without some merch. We got merch we got drops, merch of course, we can't, we can't merch drops. without that. Where I saw one cool thing in the lineup, which was James's jacket. But I already thought ahead on that one. After I beat Silent Hill 2 for the first time, I had I was searching everywhere for a jacket like his, and I, I found it. I found what I needed, so I don't need that. What? Oh my goodness, you can get the coins from that one puzzle in the game? <gasps> what? And you can get the infamous purple bull keycard from that other puzzle in the game? That's crazy. People are going to be clawing the walls to get that one, that's for sure. But I feel like I've seen this lineup before somewhere. <clears throat> Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the characters. Now, I can sit here and complain and mope about the character models all I want, but ultimately it doesn't really matter that much. It's not like it's gonna destroy my experience. I'm sure most people will get used to them after a little while, if they decide to fix whatever this is. Other than that, it's fine, it's fine. But it's actually not all fine. I can get around updated models, changed faces, and all that wham, but Deliberately changing an entire character's style, personality, and look is a bit weird in my opinion. The subject in question being Maria. We didn't see too much of her in the gameplay trailer, so I could just be talking out of my ass here, but what we did see, she seemed like a completely different person than what we see her as in the original game. Alright, spoilers. So, Maria is supposed to be the construct of James's psyche, right? She's supposed to look identical to James's wife, they have the same face, same voice, which they also seem to have done in the remake. The thing that differs between Mary and Maria is their personalities, with Maria's personality and general tone representing the lust and desires from what James lacked from Mary in the latter days of their marriage due to her disease. So obviously she's gonna have a more spicy, extroverted personality, since she's literally the manifestation of that soul part. In the remake, she's Ashley Graham 2.0. She's timid, scared, and confused, just like James is, when that isn't her character at all. Yeah, Maria had her freak out moments in the original, but the overall vibe that the player got from her was that she always seemed to know more than she was letting on, always toying with James in some way, 
just idling in rooms, standing still while you were searching around them, not saying anything. And that was creepy. Now, I, I understand times have changed and yada 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 yada. Maria is supposed to creep you out, but I got none of that from what we saw. I completely understand the redesign of characters like Ada Wong and the real Ashley Graham from the older Resident Evil, and there was... You know, no reason for them to look like that, which is why they redesigned them. But with Maria, it is the point that she looks and acts like that. Maybe they just didn't decide to include those scenes for some reason, and I don't know why they wouldn't. It's just the vibe that I'm getting from her in the scenes that we did see kind of fell short, so it didn't really seem like her character at all. Okay, enough talking smack. What did I actually like? Well, I actually think that the gameplay trailer wasn't half bad. I think they nailed the atmosphere pretty great. The atmosphere in the town is definitely still there. The fog looks amazing. We haven't seen too much of the other world sequences yet, but the town itself looks pretty good. That's basically it. I also like how when you find an item, James physically picks it up and inspects it, be it a health drink, a collectible, or a weapon. You can see like you can turn it with your hands and inspect it and stuff. That's pretty cool. Another nice touch is that he also physically takes out the map and you can see him marking certain locations with a pen in real time. This is something that would just kind of appear in the map in the original after checking areas. So small things like that definitely help with the immersion and overall it's just a nice attention to detail which I'm sure we can all appreciate. Along with the over the shoulder camera. The combat? Um, it's really hard to tell from just looking at it, but it definitely looks better than it did in the combat trailer we got a few months back. I think we'll have to play it for ourselves to really get a feel for it, but either way, I really hope it's an improvement from... I also really, really hope that they retain the whole not a fighter feel to the combat. Because James is just some regular ass guy. I mean, it's not Leon Kennedy roaming the streets, surplexing, backflipping, jumping, humping, roundhouse kicking everyone he comes across. Sorry, must have slipped. Another thing that I noticed, which I really like, and something I hope happens more than just this one time, is the inclusion of these subtle, violent outbursts that James gets once in a while when interacting with other characters and when he gets frustrated. Mary's my friend. We met at the hospital last year. Stop lying! Laura, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Fine! Don't believe me! Hinting at the fact that he might not be entirely what others think of him as. So it's nice to have those moments where the mask kind of slips. <laughs> before the eventual plot twist near the game's finale. So, I guess we'll have to wait until October 8th to see how this really turns out. And remember, if you want to unlock the ability to play the game a whole two days before release, then make sure to get the ultra super special super duper deluxe edition, now including James with a pizza box on his head for a mere 86 bucks or 79 euro. I'll give you a tip. Download the Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition, made by passionate members of the community, offering you all the quality of life changes you need for the modern audience. I don't even know what that means. Modern audience. I would consider myself a modern audience. Like, I, I'm here, right? I'm, I didn't play the original when it came out. I wasn't born when the first one came out, but, like, I can still play that game. Like, it's not like the, like the graphics or the controls are unmanageable. Like, I could still go through it. I played that shit on my school laptop and still got through it. So, I don't know what they're insinuating with modern audience. Like, do they mean everything has to be the top-notch quality with over-the-shoulder flashy everything i don't understand i need someone to explain modern audience to me but yeah in the silent hill 2 enhanced edition there's all the remaking you need for such an intricate title like silent hill 2. Psst. also this might be a lead up to another essay about silent hill 2 so be sure to stay tuned for that one down the line thanks for watching Faith up. <laughs>